Presented by Private Internet Access. Welcome back to Where of the Toshi. I'm here with Pavel Filimonov, who's running Urban Garden 24, a shop where you can buy all things necessary for growing your own food. We talked a little bit about how there's a lot of disruption going on right now. Not just in the financial world, you, ac you accept Bitcoin, you accept Dash, you accept Ethereum, but also in growing your own food with prepping and basically not trusting the system because the system won't be there for you. And in any case, when it is, you can still grow healthier food yourself. So you have financial disruption, you have food disruption, you have IT disruption. And all of this is coming together. Could, could you elaborate a little on that? Yeah, so um, maybe I would start with um, that I don't believe into, into crushing the old systems or destroy the old, old systems. Buck Mr. Fuller had a great quote on that, didn't he? Like, I don't remember it word by word, but something like, if, you want, if you're angry at an old system, you should never fight it because the only way to get rid of the old system is to b build something new that replaces it. Yeah, exactly. And th this is true. We are not going to... Uh, be because if we destroy the old system, it doesn't mean that we have a better new system. Like right. A good system would make the old system obsolete. So, And that's what I see more and more happening, especially mm -hmm. with the cryptocurrencies. That's the perfect example for it. Right. So they the did not destroy the fiat currencies, but they make it... Yeah, yeah, they are competed, and it's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And th this is what also like the, all this crypto technology is enabling us to to connect and to build our own systems of um, order and govern ourselves in different ways. And I, I think the future will not be that we uh, destroy nations, but that nations in the future will have to accept self-governing systems and work with them together. And um, how, how all the um, food production ties into it is basically that right now we also have a market system where your the, the, the guy that produces the food basically gets the least money and all the hands that have the food while it go goes to the customer, um, yeah, they take the profit on it and that makes food in, in many ways ex more expensive than it should be or could be. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, but uh, we well. see that uh, direct distribution is starting to grow on, in uh, every l way of uh, uh, food production and also Amazon Fresh uh, yeah. with their delivery service where they take uh, directly from the producer. So you basically, the, the big companies where that sell different kind of produce that they buy on, mm -hmm they get a little bit outcompeted in that way. But isn't that the better way to build a new system? Like you're outcompeting the old system on its own terms. Yeah. Like th it's easy to say that food product, the guys and people bu building the, uh, no, growing the food don't get paid enough. But every attempt to sort of subsidize this or make them paid more on artificial terms have had its own drawbacks in all sorts of yeah, of course. In, I mean, if you're out competing the old give on its own terms, this is what we should be seeing in finance, in, in IT, in food production, in, in even more. So we, we saw it a little bit with the internet. Like you, you touched on this with governments and how they used to be able to control the narrative, tell you what to think, tell you what to know, tell you what movies would be on television that night because there was only state-controlled television. Yeah, yeah. No, not too long ago, there wasn't. Uh, yeah. There wasn't anything else. And we're seeing an attempt right now to go back to it. Exactly. Like, the, the, that train has left the station. That, that cat is out of the bag and so on. And it's only now that governments are starting to realize what it means that you have lost control of the narrative. Yes, yes. And, and the Pandora box is it, open. And they're talk exactly. And they're talking about it as, as fake news. But... A lot of the time, what they talk about as fake news is just news that we did not come up with it first. Yeah, and that we not approve of. Uh, that they don't approve of, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, it, it's the same thing with Bitcoin, isn't it? I mean, money was always an illusion, and government knew, governments know this, but they could never imagine not being in control of that illusion. Yeah, and 
it's so interesting that the hierarchy structure of basically the, the hierarchy of authority has been disrupted because the, the authority was who was licensed by the state. So your professor, your doctor, your mm. someone. And now you can go on YouTube, find some nerdy guy who read himself into a thousand of books and basically has no official education, but is so passionate about something that he pr pr can provide you with better and, and more uh, uh, important and easily accessible information than, than some uh, university professor that is basically spinning the same information for 20 years and not really evolving. But I don't want to say every university professor is bad, but that's a time where, where this authority of, of uh, who is right has been completely disrupted. Abs and ab yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, if you're looking at these people who do something for passion, it's frequently the case that they are better at it, not just necessarily because they are better objectively, but because they don't need to make a business out of it. I mean, if, if you have a day job and you're really passionate about something on the side, that means you can easily spend two hours digging into something that a professional can't justify taking two hours productive time out to, to do. Like if you were a lawyer, you would, need, you would need to charge a lot of money for that. But if you're a paralegal who just happens to be really passionate, then your conditions are so completely different then that's, that, that, that's disruption all in itself. Yeah, yeah. You can become even more manic than just two hours a day. You can also spend a lot of sleepless nights like I did <laughs> <laughs> if you're really passionate about something. So Right. And there's also disruption on the governmental level. You mentioned before we started filming that you became a citizen of BitNation the other day. Yeah, just yesterday, actually. And I heard, like, I, I think... At the same time, I heard about Bitcoin. I heard also about some project like BitNation. Mm -hmm. And because I'm believing in this free kind of governments and self-governance systems, I was watching it, but I never like did the... Sometimes you, you, you see something interesting, but you are not sure enough. You don't believe mm -hmm. enough in it to just try it out. And yesterday, I went into it and it's still a fresh project, BitNation, it but is. what they are trying to do is not build their own mo mon monopoly nation, as you could say it, but build a platform for developing competing nations. So mm. on the platform of BitNation. Right. And I mean, if we're talking disruption, the idea of outcompeting a government and a government's services on its own terms. That's, I mean, you don't get much more <laughs> disruptive than that. That's true, that's true. But it's also, uh, I, I guess, and I think it's pretty hard to do because uh, you have so many different legal structures that you have to comply with because you can't just be, say, we are the new government, you have to work with the government and make it more and more obsolete and also like, put it in a way that they don't feel that you are attacking them, but com completing their system and actually taking problems off the government right. that's already existing. Because right, you're a compliment until the day they realize you've been completely replaced. Yeah, yeah. And especially in the time where we have more and more perpetual travelers and mm. people who just work all around the world and travel a lot, uh, services like worldwide insurance and just security or just picking you up from wherever you are and having some infrastructure to communicate with people that are on your s on the same level is already a service that would find a lot of people that are interested. And um, I mean, uh, I, I see a great future in that, but it's always the question, okay, how fast is it gonna be and how many problems are we gonna encounter? And, and that's, that's the thing about being a trailblazer, isn't it? You're literally going where nobody has gone bef before you yeah so yeah. you don't know if it's the right path because you're breaking new ground yeah you're so you gotta <laughs> you gotta work by trial and error you you try to slay dragons no one slayed before and maybe this dragon is too big and is gonna eat you but you're doing it for your own ideals mm. and you try to exactly you, you try what's best exactly so we're seeing dis disruption in in food in technology and narrative and news distribution we're seeing disruption in finance and even at the government level. Yeah. Uh, and you're working at the food, le 
at the food level for this and doing something as revolutionary, something as disruptive as letting people grow their own food, which is quite important. I mean, it all goes back to that. It's easy to, I'm taking a, going on the side track, have I? It's really easy for a lot of people to take food distribution for granted. But I mean, you, you said you grew up in the Soviet Union, so it was never taken for granted, which is... No, I, I actually grew up with blue milk and dry bread. So mm. because at 91, the government basically collapsed, all this communist right. uh, structures collapsed, and uh, there were sh shortages that were just like people were half starving. And, yep. and tanks were standing in Moscow, and uh, there were fights breaking out, and it was like an interesting situation. So the underlying theme here, I think, is that food distribution is a lot more radical and even revolutionary than a lot of people realize because growing your own food and circumventing and even making yourself independent of the market's food supply, the government's food supply, makes you untouchable. I mean, it all comes back to food at the end of the day, having something to eat.